welcome to Still Speak Podcast. So two or three nights ago, I think it was two, I brought you the story of the missing 20-year-old in San Diego, California. When I did that video, I mentioned that her name was spelled L-A-T-E-C-H-E, and that I saw everybody referring to her as Leticia, but then I saw her mother on News Nation, and it sounded to me like she was calling her Leticia. So I wanted to correct that because I don't want to mispronounce this young girl's name who is missing. So that's one correction I wanted to discuss. The second thing is that I said I was going to be contacting the mother directly. She was very vocal in a group that I was in. Her name is Cheryl Walker to get a little bit more information, a little bit more clarity on some of the things that are being said. But the great news is, is that she has been very busy looking for her daughter and the good news is, is that she has even um, gotten contact with Gabby Petito's parents. She was on News Nation. She's all over the place, getting her daughter's name out there and pounding the pavement, going all over the worst places of San Diego, searching for her daughter. So I was unable to get that information from her. That being said. She did disclose in the interview on News Nation something that I did find a little interesting. She was asked about any type of uh, domestic abuse. And she said, well, there's a domestic element. Now, you can take that any which way you want to. It could be that uh, it was just a toxic relationship all the way around from both parties. It could be that she meant that in a way of, well, it's not physical, but it may be emotional and mental abuse. And then she described how she was never around for their fights. She can only go off of what she had been told by her daughter. I do know that both of them were arrested not long ago in a domestic incident. In some states, they do arrest both parties if they can't figure out who was at fault. And it's a precautionary type of measure they put in place. And so it could have been that, you know, she was blaming him, he was blaming her, and the cop's like, I don't freaking know. And so he arrested both of them. I don't know. That is one of the things I'm trying to get further information about. I wish the Moab police who did the Brian Laundrie and Gabby Petito stop with their domestic incident would have done that because maybe if they both ended up being, you know, held or charged, maybe one of them would have left the trip and went home and it could have been avoided what happened. That being said, there's no guarantee of that and we can do all the coulda, shoulda, woulda, but that's not what happened. But I think it's wise for police to do that um, when you just don't know and there's nothing, you know, factually showing you who's at fault. You just arrest both. I know a lot of people want to criticize her for being in this relationship with this man who was, you know, not the greatest of citizens, okay? He's an arsonist. He got kicked out of the Navy. He's homeless. He has no car. He was in rehab. He's got an addiction problem. Um, There's a domestic element to their relationship. But I want you to keep in mind, okay? She's 20 years old. That's all I need to say. She's 20 years old, right? And in addition to that, I know that it's so easy for us on the outside to be like, why do these women go with these deadbeat, abusive guys, you know, and do this and that and stay with them? And it's so much easier said, you know, than done. In most cases, it's very hard for people to leave domestic situations. You can look at this and say, well, she was in another state. Why did she go out there to meet up with him? Well, you know, fear, um, empty promises, thinking this time it's going to be different. 
This is very common stuff. So let's not jump on her too much here. She's a very young girl and she may love this man, you know, and sometimes women feel like they can help a guy or fix a guy and, uh, you know, their presence will make them be better. And then they find out the hard way that that's not true. When I brought you this story a few days ago, at that point, I was looking at this very simple and black and white. And I was like, he had to have done something to her because where the hell is she? In my mind, I was thinking, okay, so when they fight, they both call her mother. It's been three weeks and this is a couple that's known to fight and then call the mother. And in three weeks, they didn't fight at all. And neither of them called the mother. I'm like, nah, uh uh-uh. And then I saw the, he had a post on his Facebook stories on the 13th. And I'm like, all right, this dude did something. He had to have, because where the hell is this girl? Because her mom is adamant that her daughter would not willingly go and live you know, and be homeless in the, in the homeless camps and tent cities. She does not believe that at all. And she knows her daughter best. So that was kind of where my head was at. I was hoping that they are just out there somewhere living in a tent and maybe her phone broke. But then I was thinking like, no, nah, I think she would have found a phone or a way to call her mom, just like the way that she took a stranger's phone and asked for it and said, hey, can I call my mom? And she called her mom. So I would think that after all this time, she would have done that. So that's where my head was at. And tonight, I was not even going to do a video because I wanted to go uh, lay down. I had a mild headache and wanted to watch an episode of Dexter. And then as I was on the computer, I saw a story that I'm uploading with this video about a missing woman in Newport, Ritchie, Florida named Kathleen Moore. And something about the story really stuck out to me and I wanted to get it out right away. So I decided to come and do a video about it. While I was preparing for that video, the San Diego police released two, uh, footages of the 7-Eleven, and in that you see Letitia and Joey. In the 7-Eleven, on November 4th, around 11, I believe, 30 at night, I think it was like 11.23 p.m. on the 4th. Now, this is the night that they were fighting, and both of them called her mother. And the next morning, Letitia was not with Joey because when she called her mother, she asked for the number that Joey was calling from the night prior. Now, I'm going to share that video with you. There is no audio. Letitia does not look happy at all. And if they were fighting, that makes sense, right? Of course she's unhappy. And... She also gives me a vibe of being very uncomfortable. So they start to walk in the store. And this 7-Eleven is underneath what looks to be to me in apartment building. And when you come in the door, there's a staircase down into the store. It's very unique for 7-Eleven. And when they're walking in, she goes in first. She has a backpack on. Her hair's up in a bun. And... Joey's holding the door open and he's talking to someone and you can't see the person except for like chest down and it does look look like that person is also wearing a backpack and it looks like he's trying to explain something to them and then he walks in the store, they walk down the stairs and then the next clip is them standing in front of the cashier, Letitia is um, standing at the bottom of the stairs And he's standing in front of the cashier, but a little bit of a distance away from the cashier. And he's like doing something with his arms and he points over to his uh, left, I believe. And they're having this conversation. We have no idea what the conversation was. I'm sure that clerk was interviewed by the police. I'd love to know. Seeing this video actually changed my view of this story a little bit and hear me out because this is the scenario that I came up with from watching this. It appeared to me like maybe Joey was telling the person outside 
wait here. We'll be right back. I'm just going to gra- go in here and grab X, Y, Z. We'll be right back. Like reassuring the person. Okay. And then he comes in and he's having this conversation with the cashier. It's brief, but I frequent 7-Elevens by my home. And for some reason, their ATMs are always broken. I don't know why, but it just always seems to be broken. And for some reason, when I was watching Joey, I was thinking in my head, I wonder if he went in there to get money and was asking the cashier about the ATM and maybe like the cashier was telling him the next closest ATM for him to go to because then uh, Letitia puts her head down and they proceed back up the stairs and that's all you see. And the reason why my mind went there, I think, is because of this person outside. I just felt like Joey was really trying to reassure this person before coming inside and I wondered if he owed that person money or was trying to get drugs and something to that effect. Latasha did not go missing that night, though. The next morning, she called her mother, and that's when she wanted the number that Joey had been calling from the night before. And this had me wondering how they got separated, right? And at this point is when I kind of started to change my view of the case. And I was starting to go, hmm, maybe they really are both missing, Maybe both of them, something happened. Here's why. Joey has no car. He doesn't have a place to live. Okay? And they were living out of these backpacks, which are not big at all. So if he did something to her, how did he transport her somewhere? Hmm? She ain't fitting in that backpack. And um, he had no place to live. So it's not like he could have harmed her in a place that he was living and then left her there. He had no place to live. So if he did something to her, then what? He just left her wherever she was in the middle of San Diego, which is a city, and took off somewhere? Not like he had like an extra suitcase laying around where he can put her in and get an Uber. They had just these little backpacks. So then I started to wonder if whoever they were with took Joey, okay? And I don't mean like killed him, but, you know, harmed him uh, in some way. And then the next day, maybe she called that number, which goes back to those people. And then they were like, oh yeah, he's here. And then she went there and found out they did something to him. And then something happened to her. And then I was thinking about this phone call from the stranger's phone And I was thinking about her not having her phone and her mother doesn't know why she doesn't have her phone when she called her. And I thought to myself, well, if some these people did do something to Joey, right? Um, Maybe they took her phone so that she couldn't call anybody and tell them that. Then I considered maybe Joey was with her when when she called her mom and maybe Joey wanted the number that he was calling from to call those people for some reason, but that doesn't explain why she didn't have her phone. So I'm really starting to think a little bit differently about this case. And I am beginning to wonder that even though this dude is an arsonist, even though he's homeless, has no car, has an addiction, was in rehab and is not the best. Okay. Um, If this really is a case where both of these people are legitimately missing together and something happened to both. I know he had that Facebook stories post on the 13th, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it was him and there was no other. So it was just the one of this car in a parking lot, kind of like somebody was trying to throw somebody off trail. I would think that if Joey did do something, that he would have needed help in some way. That's my thought, because I just don't know what he could have done with her in this city. You know, it's not like Gabby Petito. Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie were in the middle of freaking Grand Teton National freaking park. 
off this dirt road and she was, you know, a hundred yards away over three creeks out by the mountains by these trees and that's in the middle of nowhere. This is in San Diego in a city. Like the seven eleven is in the middle of the city area. So where the hell could he have harmed her and left her that nobody has found her or seen her? I just, I don't know. I'm getting a different vibe now after seeing this footage. I just feel like, I don't know, maybe really something happened to these two. Maybe it does involve drugs and not her doing drugs, but something with him. And this is maybe why they were fighting. Who knows? Drug deals go bad all the time. You hear all kinds of crazy stories. It's not totally far-fetched. And if the people he was talking to, you know, had a car, it's an easy getaway. And uh, disposing, too. I really want to believe that she's out there and her mom's wrong and her gut is wrong. And that she really is out there somewhere in a tent living and she's fine. I'm just not buying it. I think at this point she would have contacted her mother. She would have found a way to borrow somebody else's phone to let her mother know that she was okay. I mean, she did it once before. Why wouldn't she do it again? And I hate to say that. I really hate to say that, that she's not safe. But my gut is telling me that she's in danger or was in danger. And uh, we need to continue to share her face and her name and hope that she is found soon. So that's it for right now until I can get more information. Until next time, I'll see you soon.